is a car race. In fact, at the moment, it's the car race because it's really the, um, the only playable one in the world. Or should we say it's one of two? The first, this is a reconstruction of an instrument that was found very close to here in 1816. And in fact, this is a really lovely evening for me. Something I haven't told any of my friends is that Margaret's great, 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 great. It's Jimmy Huxley. It's yours. <laughs> this is the family of um, the, the person who actually discovered this instrument <laughs> uh, an awfully long time ago. Now, this, this is quite wonderful because I'm part of a team from the National Museum of Scotland that reconstructed what is called the Deskford Carnix. Anybody from here knows the wee parish of Deskford, uh, just towards Cullen there. Well, in 1816, the land was very boggy and people were improving the land, digging down to lay field drains, as I understand. And uh, a good, nearly 16 feet down, they hit metal, and what they actually hit was this, or the original of this, was a head in metal. Nobody knew what it was. Um, however, they informed the local minister, who was a very good watercolourist. A very good job that they did, because um, as is always the case with precious objects found in the ground, little bits started to disappear. But when it was found in the ground, it was a head complete with a wagging jaw and a tongue and a leaf spring which moves. And inside this head there was a soft palate, a reached soft palate, like the soft palate of a real pig, because this is a wild boar's head. And staring eye sockets. And what was found was just this. Now, nobody knew what it was. They thought maybe it was uh, a helmet crest. Okay, it's possible. Or perhaps it was a gatepost, just a bit more boring. Um, or they surmised maybe it was a bishop's crozier. Now, there were some very warlike bishops about, so that was also a possibility. But nobody really knew what it was. It was a precious object, and it went off at uh, first bamf, and then gradually made its way down to the um, the vaults of the Royal Museum in Edinburgh, where it sat in a cardboard box until 1955, when archaeologists recognised it as being the best preserved part anywhere in the world of an instrument that the ancient world called a carbonyx. So, this is a very faithful reconstruction of the desk for the carbonyx, and carbonyx is a Greek word. We have no idea what the people that made it called the instrument. These were people of Celtic culture, but they were not Scots. This is a long time before the Scots got to Scotland. And for that matter, it's a long time before the English got to England. Uh, this is uh, Celtic Britain, and the people that made this instrument are perhaps the Aboriginal inhabitants of Northern Britain, the people that later invaders called the Picts, or the Picti, the Romans called these people the Picts, they're still here. If you live, if you come from here, the strong possibility is that genetically you are one of these people, or at least that you have part of one of these people in you. Because they were never killed, driven out, they were simply absorbed by successive waves of people. But 2,000 years ago they had a tremendous culture. They were people living at a very peaceful time for these islands. No Vikings, no Scots. The Romans had stopped further south. Up here they traded and raided, but they didn't settle. Uh, the climate was pretty good, and people had a very, very good existence 2,000 years ago in the north of Scotland. They obviously had time and culture, the skills to make fabulous objects like this. Now these instruments were made right across ancient Europe, as far to the east as what we now think of as Hungary. Uh, fragments have been found in Germany, Austria, northern Italy, and southern Scandinavia. But until 18 months ago, the most complete part was this desperate carvings. 18 months ago, in France, on the edge of the Dordogne region in the Bézère, um, people building a car park broke through into Celtic princess's tomb by accident and five of these instruments were discovered. And they're even older and they're a little different. They're as different as a lute is from a guitar. 
or a viol from a violin. Instruments develop a lot in 50 years. 100 years is a huge time. 500 years is a massive time for musical instruments to develop. So this instrument was obviously used by people of Celtic culture over a huge area for about 800 years. So it was a well-known instrument in pre-Roman Europe and also in Gallo-Roman Europe because the instrument became a symbol of resistance to the Romans in Gaul particularly. So most of the uh, Greco-Roman depictions are of this instrument diminished, turned upside down, crushed, broken, trampled because it was a symbol of these people. It's only on Celtic representations we can see the true shape and stature of the instrument. And on the Gunderstuck chalice found in Denmark, but made probably in Scythia, we can see three people playing this instrument. And we can tell that it was played like that, which makes it very high. Now, I'm not going to talk much longer. If you would be interested in hearing this instrument in a really developed way, there are actually CDs there. You know, this instrument is actually on um, seven CDs, three film soundtracks, BBC talking book. I've played it on every continent now, apart from Antarctica and Australia. Um, and uh, I just opened the BBC proms in the park. I'm delighted to say to 25,000 people playing it. That was great. Um, and at the end of this month, on the 29th of September, the weekend of the 29th of September, um, I'm delighted to say that Historic Scotland have given permission for one of the other composer, um, artists in residence here, uh, Dingji, who is sitting back there in a great jacket, um, to mount an installation <coughs> at Balvenie Castle. And this is the weekend of the Whiskey Festival, and that's a wonderful reason for coming here. And I will join Dingji and participate in that event. It's her event, but I'm delighted to be involved with it as well, and so you can hear the carvings again uh, in Balvenie Castle. Okay. So I'll play it very quickly, and as I say, it's a, this is an instrument that slipped for nearly 2,000 years and has come to life and is really getting used a lot, and uh, it's kind of a nice symbol of regeneration and energy, and I thought it was a nice symbol of what happened to these wonderful young people. <laughs> 